Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Lambda Test. So already we have learned Selenium with Java and then we have learned Playwright with TypeScript. Now we are going to learn the Playwright with Java binding. In this video, we are going to learn a basic introduction to the Playwright. Then we are going to learn how to set up the project with the help of like we are going to install the JDK, we are going to install the Maven and also we are going to install the Eclipse ID. You can also use the Intel IJ, but throughout the playlist, I will go with the Eclipse ID because that is what very handy for me. And you can follow the same so that you will learn few of the shortcuts in Eclipse. If you have already watched our Playwright with TypeScript uh, tutorial playlist, probably you know what is Playwright. And of course, there is a new version released every month and we have a lot of changes. So I'm going to cover that. And if you are going to very new to the playwright, then of course this will really help you to understand the playwright and its advantage. Let's get started now. Playwright is a Node.js library to automate Chromium, Firefox and WebKit with a single API. Playwright is built to enable cross-browser testing. Just in case if you do not know Chromium, uh, Chromium is the browser engines. For example, we use Chrome browser, we use Brave browser and newly launched like arc browser all are based based on the chromium engine and if you see like mozilla firefox which is like um, the engine is basically your firefox and webkit is basically for your safari uh, if you are using ios like uh, mobile for ios safari browser or the mac os then of course you know there is a safari so webkit is the engine that is helped to create the browsers like safari Playwright by Microsoft did start as a fork of Puppeteer. So just in case if you do not know, Puppeteer is a node library to automate only the Chromium browsers with the JavaScript API. And mostly that runs on the headless mode. That means uh, we cannot see the UI. We can just execute our test. But Playwright supports both headless and as well as uh, head mode as well. We will talk about that in our upcoming lecture. So let us discuss why we should learn Playwright and what are the advantage compared to any other framework or API. So as we know, like it's built for cross-browser testing. So we can run on any browser, any platform using the one API. So for example, like it supports cross-browser across like Chromium, Firefox and WebKit. So Playwright comes with bundled browsers. That is what we mostly use to execute. But just in case if you want to execute in your local browser, for example, Microsoft Edge or the Chrome, of course, we can do that as well. So the advantage of using the browser engines, Chromium, for example, let's say that now the Chromium uh, engine version is, let's consider it is like 115. But if you see the browser that we have installed in our machine, like the Chrome or the Brave, they will be like N minus one. So it will be like uh, 114 and the engine will be like 115. So we are already testing ahead a release of the actual Chrome browser, which is really good. But of course, when we do the regression or like after the release, if I want to do the smoke test, I would like to execute in the uh, browser that is installed on my machine. Then of course, I can go with the local browser like Chrome or Microsoft Edge as well. And of course, it's supposed like cross platform. We can run our test in Windows, Linux, Macs, in local machine, or also we can use like continuous integrations, maybe like Jenkins or CI, or of course, we are going to use the Lambda test platform as well. And of course, we can run both in headless and head mode as well. And one more major advantage of Playwright is like uh, we have multiple bindings. So we can use the Node.js, which is like JavaScript and the TypeScript. And then we have the Java, we have the Python, and also we have the .NET. Uh, language support so whatever your comfort you can pick the playwright and you can write your test and we can also test the mobile browser uh, not the native application we can use only the uh, like if it's android we can use the chrome browser if it's ios we can use the safari browser we can only interact with the browser as of now we do not have like native application support that is like your apk files we cannot do that for now maybe in future we can expect but yeah, for now, we can just only automate only the browsers available within the mobile. And my personal favorite feature of uh, Playwright is this no flaky test. That means it has like inbuilt support of auto weights, which we'll learn in our upcoming sessions. And then it has like web first assertion, 
in TypeScript, we have like the first assertion. Of course, we have in that Java as well. But in TypeScript, we have like hard and soft asset. But whereas in Java, we have only the hard asset. Uh, we'll talk about that in our upcoming videos, how to do the assertion properly. And also we have the tracing. Tracing means like we can see the DOM snapshot and also the screenshot of your execution, the live video rendering. It's kind of okay. I will show you more on that. And there are no limits. We can multiple everything. We can have like multiple tabs. We can have like multiple browsers. We can have also multiple users. Multiple users in the sense like, for example, I want to run my test in the Chromium browser where I have to log in with my admin. At the same time, I want to launch another browser without any of the cache and cookies from my admin user. Rather, I want to use my like actual test users. So I can have like two browsers at the same time and both will have its own context like it will have its own cache and the cookies. So we can run like uh, we can simulate like chat application or admin and users application at the same time without any problem. And of course it has like trusted events we can do like drag and drop we can do the hover we can interact with drop downs we can interact with multiple input elements. So all the events are supported in playwright and of course it has like frame so frame supports and then also it supports like shadow dom okay so it's basically shadow dom support okay and powerful tooling we have like few of the great features like code gen code gen basically will help us to generate the playwright code in any language in any binding so i can just record my test in the javascript typescript uh, we have like java bindings we have like python and .NET as well okay so this is really powerful i will show you the demo and of course we have the playwright inspector one of the greatest tool to do the debugging and i can make it sure like this is the one of the best compared to your selenium cypress webdriver whatever the testing framework you know this playwright inspector is the best i can say and also we have the trace viewer which is uh, very uh, similar to your tracing so we'll see that in live action as we move forward. The first thing first, we are going to uh, install the JDK and the latest version seems like to be uh, 20. But of course, we are going to use the older version that is JDK 11. So if you scroll down here, you can see like Java 11 version is there and just go there based on your operating system. In my case, of course, it's a Windows machine and I'm going to download the installer. So x64 installer, just click on that. It will um, download for you okay just accept the terms and condition and then click on like download java and then just click on this download jdk and i'm downloading it from the oracle website so of course you should have the user account if you don't have just create account it's free and you can just give your data that's it very simple so i'm going to download on my desktop folder let me create a new folder called uh, playwright installation something like that and let me save it here i will leave all the link in the description you can just go and click it click and download it from there okay so let it complete the download and it says like blocked dangerous but i know it's safe so i'm just going to click on the skip and yeah it's downloaded okay then we are going to download the maven setup as well so if you go to this particular link and if you go to the files and then we have like binary zip so i'm going to download this one okay so just click on this 3.9.1 and you can save in your same folder it will be zip file so yeah fine okay so once both are downloaded that's it then we have to do the eclipse but before that we will set up the jdk and the maven okay so it's very simple actually if you go to the so here is my jdk i'm just going to double click on this and make sure you are going to use the same like 11 version if you already have that you can skip the step if you don't have just follow it's very simple okay just you have to click like next and then followed by next that's it we are pretty much done with installation it's very simple actually and just you can click on the close that's it but once this is done you have to do the uh path okay we have to set the path in the environment variable so let's see you can just go to your file explorer uh, like this pc and right click and you can go with like properties and then we have this as advanced system settings and then we have this environment variable now here we have to create two things one is this user variable for 
couch of course it will be like your name and then we have to set the system variable okay so first of all go to your the spacey go to your c drive and program files and then go to the java and here i can say i have like java 11 i can just go and copy the path parent path okay the root of the folder and here i have to say like java underscore home and then for by just give the path you copied okay make sure it's going to be java underscore in caps or else it might not work okay then click on ok that's it we are done with our first step second step within the system variables you have to click on the path and you click on this edit then click on new and here you have to give the path then followed by slash bin okay so in the system variables we have to focus to the bin folder and within the home that is like user variables we have to give the root of the path okay so that's it we are pretty much done now give ok and give ok just to confirm go to your command prompt like cmd and here you can say like um, java dash version so if you are able to see something like this then of course it's working if you are on windows like 7 or um, any other version you might have to restart but if you are on windows 10 or 11 you don't have to restart your system okay so that's it we are pretty much done with our first installation now we are going to do the apache maven so i'm going to navigate to my folder the downloaded folder i'm going to copy the file zip file and I'm, I will go to my Windows C folder, the hard disk, I mean the C drive and I will paste it. It will ask for continue, just give continue and then I'm just going to do the extract here. Okay, so here you can select we have this Apache Maven 3.9.1.bin. Okay, so if you go within this, you will have another folder, just go within this and you just copy the path. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again set the environment variable. So same thing, just go to advanced system settings, go to environment variables, click new. And here I'm going to give like maven underscore home with capital and just give the root of the path, root, root path of the folder. Okay, just click on OK. Then go to the path and click on edit and click on new. And here, of course, we have to give the bin. Okay, so always remember when it comes to like system variables you have to include the bin when it comes to like user variable we don't have to give the uh, bin folder click on ok click on ok close this that's it we are pretty much done just to confirm just go again to your command prompt cmd don't use your previous command prompt open a new command prompt and then say like mvn dash version i guess yeah, so if you give this like MVN dash version, you can see like we have this Apache Maven 3.9.1, which means correct. If you, if you are not able to see this, then of course there is something wrong with your installation. I mean, the path is wrong. Okay. So yeah, if you have facing any issues, just do let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to reply. Okay. Now we are going to use the Eclipse editor. So just go to this particular link called eclipse.org slash download slash packages. And here we are going to use the first one, Eclipse ID for Java develop developers. So based on your operating system, you can, you can just click on this particular link and that should download the editor. So it will basically give us a like zip file and we don't have to install the Eclipse. It will just a runnable file. So we can extract the zip and we can make use of it. Okay, so I'm just going to save it in the same folder. The file is downloaded. I'm just going to open that on my file explorer and here it's a zip file of course we can just right click and extract and then we can use it directly we don't have to do any kind of installation for eclipse so that's it just go to the folder and within that we'll have like eclipse what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on this eclipse.exe and send to desktop that means like um, i will get a shortcut on my desktop that's a very simple thing okay so that's it for this video uh, in the next video we'll create the maven project and we'll write our first playwright script to how to launch a browser and maybe some basic actions okay so let me give you a quick recap so we have learned like what is playwright and how to do the setup using the jdk we have to use the maven binary file and also we have to use the eclipse editor okay 
So that's it from my side. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon. If you have any queries, feel free to ask me in the comment. I'll be happy to reply. Tada, bye bye. Take care.